everyone and thanks for watching Edupedia World Videos. This is the second video in the topic Reflection of Light and in this video we learn the formula and the derivation of the mirror formula 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F. Now before that just a little bit more important concept. One definition, a simple definition which I might use occasionally is the plane through the focus we saw what focus was in the last class and perpendicular to the principal axis that is if this is the mirror this is the principal axis this is the focus then this particular plane is called the focal plane right this is just a simple definition another thing the definition of real and virtual objects in images so if incident rays actually diverge from a point then it is called a real object so let's say we have an object here it gives some rays those rays may go some way and they may appear to diverge from some point then this is the point from where incident rays actually diverge so this is a real object right if incident rays appear to converge then it is a virtual object right so that is the case which we saw for a convex mirror for the second focus if somehow I can arrange rays to come like this and then be reflected in some pattern such that if there was no mirror they would have converged at a particular point then that point would have been called the virtual object right so this would have been the virtual object in that case Similarly, if reflected rays converge at a particular point, it is called a real image. A real image would be, for example, if I have, let's say, a concave mirror and I keep an object very close and let's say it does like this, the second reflected ray goes like this and the first reflected ray goes like this, where they both intersect at a particular point. If the reflected rays actually intersect at a particular point, it will be called a real image. If the reflected rays appear to diverge, it is called a virtual image. That is this case. This point, real object images, uh, incident rays diverge from real object. They go in different directions. They never intersect, but if we pull them back, they appear to diverge from this point. So this point will be called the virtual image. So if incident rays diverge real object, if incident rays appear to converge virtual object. If reflected rays converge or intersect, it's a real image. And if reflected rays appear to converge, it's a virtual image. So let's get down to the main part of it. That is the derivation of the mirror formula. Okay, so this is the mirror. Now we are going to do it for a special case, but because we'll be assuming proper sign conventions, they'll be valid for any case, whether it's a real object or a virtual object or image or a convex mirror or a concave mirror. The one assumption which we will take, however, is that all rays are paraxial. That means they are close to the principal axis. Right. So let's say this point is C. C is generally the center of curvature. It is referred to by C and this distance is the radius of curvature, which is referred to by R. Right. Let's say this is our object and this is a real object so rays diverge from this point. So one ray could be along the principal axis. That would be an easy one because it would strike the mirror perpendicular to the surface parallel to the normal. It would be reflected straight back. So if the incident ray and the reflected ray both are along this line then the image of this point object it makes sense should be along this line. Right. Now let's take another ray. Let's take a ray that goes like this and let's say comes back like this. So the first ray reflects and comes here. The second ray also reflects and comes here. And if you actually try to do it as long as the rays are paraxial, any other ray will be reflected and meet at this point as long as the rays are paraxial. So this point can be called I which is the location of the image. So this is the object 
and I'll just draw one more which I'll rub later for the sake of clarity but if there's another line going like here then you can be rest assured that it'll come back like this and all the rays if there's another line like here then it'll be reflected and come back like this and as long as the rays are paraxial all incident rays will be reflected and meet at the same point right so let's just focus on this one now if we draw the normal at this point we know that the normal is going to pass through C because C is the center of curvature at any point from the center onto a surface is perpendicular to the surface. So this C has to be the normal, we know that because it is perpendicular to the tangent. Right. Let's say this angle is I and this angle is R. We know by the laws of reflection that I is equal to R. Let's take some other angles. Let's say this is alpha, this is beta, this is gamma. Right. Let's say I is equal to R is equal to theta for now because instead of having two variables, we'll just have one variable theta because we've already used this equation. Right. So one equation can be beta is equal to alpha plus theta. You look at beta, that is the exterior angle in this triangle. So it is equal to the sum of these two angles. Similarly, if you look at the same thing here, gamma will be equal to alpha plus two theta. And if you just manipulate these two and eliminate theta, what you'll get is 2 beta is equal to alpha plus gamma. And now we're going to use the approximation which I've been talking about that these rays are in fact paraxial. If these rays are paraxial, that means this height or this length rather is much smaller than any of these lengths. This figure is drawn for clarity, but actually it would be something like this. This would be the point and rays would be going like this it would be extremely close to the principal axis. Right, so if it's extremely close to the principal axis, let's say this is P and let's say this point is called A, then we can write alpha is equal to AP by OP. We can write beta is equal to AP by CP and we can write gamma is equal to AP by IP. Right. All of these would actually be valid only if this point would be the center. So this equation is accurate, the other two are not really accurate. But because we've assumed rays are paraxial, we can say that this is almost equal to this and this is almost equal to this. So what that gives us is AP, AP, AP will cancel from this and 2 by CP is equal to 1 by OP plus 1 by IP. Now comes the tricky step and I must warn you this is a step in which a lot of students make mistakes so I'll repeat this properly. CP, OP and IP are all positive. Why? Because they're numbers. They're the length. IP is this length. Right? But if we actually want to take it with a sign taking this to be the origin, the right side to be the positive, then this length itself will be a negative length. Right? So what is U? U is the object distance. You might say that U is equal to OP but u is actually equal to minus op because op is the length of this side op is the distance between u and p but we know that it is on the left side whereas the positive side is the right side so u is equal to minus op similarly v is not equal to ip it is minus ip and the radius of curvature r is not equal to cp it is equal to minus cp Remember, U, V, R and F we'll always take with the signs. But when we were drawing the figure, these were just the lens, right? We did not take them with the signs. So in this case, it actually makes it simpler because all three of them are the negative of this positive thing. So if the, we put this into this, we'll get pretty much the same equation. All the minuses will cancel and we'll get 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 2 by R, which is the standard mirror formula. So this derivation is simple enough. The only thing we've really done is we assume that all these three rays are paraxial. That means this angle is equal to AP by PI, which would only really be true if PI would be the radius of this, but that's not true. But we've assumed that it is because we've assumed rays to be paraxial. Right. Now let's look at this mirror formula for a second. The formula we got is 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 2 by R. We can actually derive the second focal length from here. I'll just keep saying the second focal length even though for mirrors they're the same because when we reach lenses, there'll be two different things, right? So for the second focal length, what we needed, we needed U to be infinity and V was F. 
right? If the object is at infinity, that means rays are coming parallel to the principal axis, and where do they meet? They meet at the focus. So if the object distance is infinity, then the image distance has to be the focus by definition of the focus. So we put these two here, we'll get 1 by f plus 1 by infinity will be 0 is equal to 2 by r. From that we get f is equal to r by 2. This is the result I'm sure you've seen in lower classes. The focal length is half of the radius of curvature. But this actually makes this whole thing easier as well because we can just write 2 by r is 1 by f and we get 1 by v plus 1 by u is equal to 1 by f. This is the mirror formula which you should be more familiar with. Right. Now when you look at the point object, like we did in this case, a point object really doesn't have any dimensions, so we don't need to worry about the height of the image or the height of the object. But if you have an extended object, then the height of the image need not be the same as the height of the object. So let's see what happens in that case. Again, I'll just take a concave mirror. By the way, I'm not going to do all those cases which you've probably seen in earlier uh, classes in 9th or 10th in which the object could be either between the pole and the focus or on the focus or between the focus and the center of curvature. All of those you can either do by drawing the figure or you can do directly by using the mirror formula. I'm not going to do all these cases separately. Right. So let's say this is the uh, concave mirror, this is the principal axis. Let's say this is an object. The bottom sends a ray like this and it comes back like this. The top let's say sends one ray like this and it comes back like this and let's say it sends another ray parallel like this and it comes back like this this would be the focus then this would be the image this is the object this is the image what is this distance let's say this distance is a p and BP, let's say this is C and this is D. Now the magnification, what will it be? You might write down the magnification as the height of the image by height of the object, saying that it is BD by AC, but again you would be making the mistake which I warned you about. BD and AC are lengths. The length of a side will never be negative. BD and AC are lens, so they will be positive. This might be one meter, this might be half a meter. However, when you're talking about the height, you need to take the sign as well. The height of the object is vertically upwards. So let's say if we write the height of the object as HO, that is equal to plus AC because vertically upwards is the positive direction. What is the height of the image? It is not equal to BD, it is equal to minus BD. Because we've taken this point as the origin, vertically upwards as positive, vertically downwards as negative and BD is downwards, right? it's an inverted image. So HI is minus BD and the magnification will be HI by H0 which will actually be equal to minus BD by AC. Right, so this is an important point. Now, if you look at these triangles, what will it be equal to? This angle is 90 degree, this angle is 90 degree, this is equal to this, because the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. If two angles of a triangle are equal, the third angle will be equal, that means the two triangles are similar. What that means is, AC by BD is equal to AP by BP. Right. What that means is the magnification is equal to minus BP by AP. Now again we need to use the proper sign convention. What is U? U is not equal to AP, U is equal to minus AP. What is V? V is not equal to BP, V is equal to minus BP because both these are towards the left of the pole and since the incident rays are towards the right, we've taken the right side to be the positive direction. So we'll just put AP is equal to minus U and BP is equal to minus V here and the equation we'll get is M is equal to minus V by U. So 1 by V plus 1 by U is equal to 1 by F is the standard mirror formula for spherical mirrors and after using this formula once you get V and U you can actually get the magnification or from that the height of the image if the height of the object is known using this formula the magnification for a mirror is minus V by U. Uh, this completes reflection of light both from a plane surface and from a spherical mirror. In the next video, we'll begin the study of the refraction of light. First from a plane surface, then from a spherical surface, then we'll combine two spherical surfaces to form a lens and we'll end up deriving the lens formula. Thank you.